In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the MageEM Configuration Manager. This library was created because I ran into a number of situations where, in order to make some kind of a system level configuration change, required uh, some kind of a deployment or a redeployment. I figured that that was kind of silly, and I really like the way Magento does a lot of its configuration through the use of a system configuration panel. So the MageEM Configuration Manager was built with the intention of being able to provide something along those lines with the addition of a command line interface that can be used by developers on development, on production, or wherever it's going to be. There are three primary goals for the Magium Configuration Manager. The first is to provide a standardized configuration panel, or CLI, so developers don't need to do a code deployment to change a configuration value. This could be for things like the title on a site, or for an SQS URL, or basically anything that could change uh, between individual environments. The second was to provide an inheritable interface where values can bubble up through child contexts. That means that there is a layer of individual contexts that are available for differing configuration values. So everything starts from a default context, but you can have increasingly specific contexts that can have different values. So say, for example, you have you know, several virtual hosts running off of the same uh, application installation. You could have a different title value for each of those individual websites going down through you know, multiple different levels. And then the third one is to provide a unified or merged configuration interface for third parties that will work in your application like magical unicorn dust. What that basically means is that somebody builds a library, say it's a Redis library or it's uh, an AWS library or something like that, they can automatically integrate their settings into your individual environment through one command line interface and through one web UI interface. And so that's what we're going to take a look at here today. We're going to take a look at first the CLI implementation uh, because we don't have a web implementation done quite yet. So we have a basic project here set up. It's got our composer.json file in there. So we'll just do a composer require and do magium configuration manager. This will obviously go through the composer setup and we'll just wait while that occurs. All right, and we're all done. Go back to our PHP storm and it will start indexing all of those dependencies that we brought down. Now we don't need to start here. We can start um, on the command line. So we'll go to vendor, bin, magium configuration. And it, the first thing that it finds out is that we don't have a magium configuration.xml file. This file is used to provide the very basic configuration to get magium up and running, and it will be loaded every time a factory is created. So we're going to specify the one that's directly in the test project itself. So I'll specify that. And that's also going to ask for a context XML file that's going to define all the individual contexts that we have for our application. And so we'll create it. If we, if we don't have to, but we're going to do it here. That creates two additional files in our directory. So what we'll do, because this is you know, a project, we'll have multiple different uh, directories here. We're going to create a new Etsy file, not a new Etsy directory, and we're going to move that contexts file into there just to make things nice and distinct, but this Magium configuration file needs to be in the root directory. So I'll open that up, and you'll see a lot of different XML in here. Now the reason for XML is because one of the things I want to do with this project is make it very easy to set up a lot of these configurations because there's often a lot of complexity and I don't like having to memorize things. So through the use of XSD, I'm able to provide uh, code completion help so that you can help figure out what exactly you need to do. So in here we see our context con configuration file. We're going to specify it's now in Etsy contexts. We have a cache adapter. These values will be converted to an array and passed into the Zend cache factory. In addition, any kind of persistence that we're going to set up, which we are going to need, is going to be passed again as an array to the 
ZenDB adapter adapter class or the adapter factory. So we have two different things that we can do here. Uh, we can also add a local cache, see how the code completion works because of our the namespace that we have set up. And I can create a local cache that has a lower TTL cache timeout so that the MCM will pull cache from the local system first, and then if it doesn't find it, it's going to go to this primary uh, one here, which is more of a remote cache. Uh, we're not going to do that. We don't. We don't want to set up too much of a. We don't want to set up too much complexity here, so we're just going to leave that here. So we've got a default adapter of file system, and a cacheder of temp. Now we're going to set up the SQL Lite. Uh, we're going to set, sorry, we're going to set up the PDO SQL Lite, and we're going to set our uh, database directory to be temp, and we'll just call it Magium, and we'll make sure uh, that should be available there. So now we have a basic setup here that has our persistence configuration, which is all where all the values are stored, and then a cache adapter, which is configured, which is where your application is going to be communicating with. Next up is to show our contexts. By default, you see we have a configuration context. Uh, by default, it'll create a production and development context, though that's not necessary at all. We can go in here and we can add additional contexts as we want. So we could have context ID is website one with the title of website one. And then we can do, now let's do this properly, another one for website two. And these are, we, this can go on and on to create all the different contexts that we want to do. Now we've got our system set up for some basic information, but what we're missing is actual settings. So we're going to go to our Etsy directory and we're going to create a new file and we're going to call it settings.xml. We're going to do just a basic XML file. Now in our settings, we need to have a node called configuration, but you'll see that it's this uh, pdepend.org. Uh, we actually need something a little different here. It's going to be www.magiumlib.com slash configuration. And that is actually going to be found, the XSD is found in the assets directory under configuration here. You'll see our target namespace there. Now the reason why we use that namespace is so that we can get a nice little code completion in here. So I specify a section and I'll call it site, head, and title. And in here I can put a description, the website title. I can also have a default value, my website, or if I really want, I can go even a level deeper and I can put in a series of permitted values that the configuration can be. But we're not going to do any of that. We're just going to do that. We can also give it friendly names. No, we should call this head so that when we actually get around to building the web interface, uh, these will all have friendly names in there. So we'll save that, but we need to do one thing. We need to tell the configuration where it's going to find this file. So there's two things we need to do. We're going to go back here, and we're going to set a configuration directories node, basically saying that it's coming from the Etsy directory. It's going to be a safe file. And then we're also going to do a configuration file called settings.xml. So what it's going to do is it's going to iterate through all the configuration directories and try and find that file settings, and it should be up here in there. So now we've got our basic setup. So to test this, the next thing we're going to do is run list keys. Now before we use this, we need to make sure that our persistence table is created. So we're going to go to Magium configuration create table. This should only be done one time in each environment. Now we will go and we will take a list of all the keys and we see our site head and title has been set up according to the settings that we've determined here. 
we want to set this now, we'll do set site head title my website title. We've set site head title to my website title in the default context, meaning that it will be there in all the different contexts. If we wanted to do it for website one, we would do my website one title for the context of website one. Now note here that we need to rebuild our configuration cache. That allows you to make multiple settings changes and then in effect committing them to the cache. So right now this value cannot be read. So we'll go back and we will get rid of that and we will run the build command. And you'll see that it was building the context default, production, website one, website two, and then development. Now this is all well and good, but we haven't actually done anything yet. So we'll just do a simple setup here. We'll create a new PHP file called uh, pub index. And of course we'll uh, just do some basic HTML. Head title. But we'll go up here and we'll just do some basic we have to do some setup before we can actually use this. Now you didn't see it, but behind the scenes there was both a manager and a builder that was being used to interact with both the cache and the database. In our application, we need to get an instance of the manager, which will create the proper configuration object for our application. So in this case, we need to get it using a configuration factory. This configuration factory basically wires everything together by default. You can create your own factory if you want, not use one at all, but this just makes things a little bit easier. So we'll do factory equals new configuration, Magium configuration factory. And then say config equals factory, get manager, get configuration. Now, this configuration, if we take a look in here, we'll go into the manager, and you'll see that the context is providable. So we'll go back to our index here, and what we could do something is something along the lines of get env environment or something like that. But we'll just we'll get rid of this for now because we don't have anything in there. Now that we have our config, do echo config get value and it will be site head title. Now before we do this, we obviously need to include our autoloader. So require once vendor autoload and just to be on the safe side make sure that we have a proper directory in there. So now let's run our pub index.php. And you see that we now have my website title. Now let's say that we have our one of our other configurations. So website one and run it again. My website one title. So let's take this down a little bit lower to the infrastructure level. While this is definitely useful for simple things such as this, there are also, like we said, infrastructure level considerations. For example, if you wanted to use Redis. So as an example, we have a Redis configuration factory that is built. And so I'll do a composer require magium Redis factory. And now when we run our vendor bin Magium configuration, uh, and we'll do Magium configuration list keys, you see that we now have our Redis configuration options there. So in this case, what I can do is I would do Redis equals factory
and we pass in the config. And then we'll do var dump redis keys. PHP 7 pub index. We see that we got our values here. But we can also change this to something else because the default is to the local host. So we could do set, but this time we will take the Redis host and we'll do something like magento.loc, which is a local development environment I have. We'll set that, we'll rebuild, and we'll rerun our index. And now we're connecting to a different server. So this is a fairly thorough run through about what you can do with the Magium Configuration Manager right now. By all means, give it a try. Let me know what you think. Use it in your own applications and of course, as always, feel free to initiate lots of pull requests for new features.